Hey friends, I have spent all day working on tech stuff, looking at computer screens and cords and wires. It is not what I was trained to do in seminary. I'm finally done. I'm going to go out and mow the lawn and listen to a podcast. But before then, I thought I would just speak at the camera for a couple minutes for anyone who might need some encouragement today. Um, this Sunday, we always have four scripture readings. We spend a lot of our time in the Word, as I think any good church does and should. Uh, but that means that there's a lot to talk about that we're just not going to get a chance to talk about on Sunday. And Romans is just, uh, in, in a lot of ways, the, the backbone of uh, the New Testament, at least. It's an amazing book. And we're reading Romans 12, 1 through 8 in worship. And uh, just the first three verses are are full of such wisdom. I thought it'd be good just to share them. I'm not going to have a 10-minute thing like last week. Um, here's, here's the scripture. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith God has assigned. So we're going to go on from there, and it's going to, I'm pretty sure I'm going to preach on what it has to say about the church after this, but the thing that I thought would be encouraging to offer today is there are a lot of people who are very perplexed as to what the will of God is, and they spend a lot of their time being anxious about God, what do you want from me? How should I lead my life? And I can't help but but see in a lot of people who struggle in this way that there is an ignorance of what God's word, the Bible says, but there's also um, an overemphasis on self. So here, this scripture does two things. <laughs> it directs us towards God saying, you know, offer your body as a sacrifice to him. You're not the main character of this story. God is. And then it says, don't think of yourself any more highly than you ought to. You need to have sober judgment. Um, this is what's required in life. And happiness doesn't lie in running from this and trying to believe that everything's all about me and acting entitled to everything. True joy in life is found in realizing that that everybody, nobody has it all. God alone has the answers. God alone is the source of my joy. And to learn to take joy in the Lord so that no matter what circumstances in your life are, whether you're rich or you're poor, or you have a bunch of haters in your life, or you have everybody loves you, none of that matters. All that matters is that God is the fount of every blessing. And so he's the main thing. Your relationship with God is the main thing in your life. And he hasn't left you alone. He's given you uh, his word, the Bible, the most commonly available, widely printed book in the world. It's available to you. Now, it's not easy to understand, but that's what a community of faith is for. And God has gifted you with a community of faith around you. Doesn't matter where you are, there is a fellowship of Christian believers. Are you searching for other humble people to be in covenant relationship with? And then third, God offers his Holy Spirit to all who ask it. You know, uh, the, the prophecy was that his Holy Spirit would be poured out upon all flesh. And so, you know, the church, the Holy Spirit, God's word, uh, what else could you need? You know, so don't don't give yourself the illusion that God has left you hanging. He hasn't. He's given everything that you need and you can have it today. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to be rich today. That doesn't mean that all of your life is going to fall into alignment today. But your life can be joyful and joy-filled as you learn to live in the Lord. So let me encourage you, live in the Lord. Alongside other brothers and sisters, I, I firmly believe you cannot do it alone. So find a community of faith. Let them minister to you and let God's Holy Spirit speak to you. I appreciate anyone listening to this message. I sure hope I've encouraged somebody. May the Lord bless you 
and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Bye.